HR Basics is a series of short lessons designed to highlight what you need to know about a particular human resource management topic. In this HR Basics, we explore labor relations, how to manage the relationships with employees organized by labor unions. Labor relations is the practice of managing and maintaining relationships with employees organized by labor unions including the establishment, negotiation, and administration of collective bargaining agreements. The National Labor Code refers to the primary legislation related to labor relations in the United States. It includes the Wagner Act, or the National Labor Relations Act of 1935, the Taft-Hartley Act, or the Labor Management Relations Act of 1947, and the Landrum-Griffin Act, or the Management Reporting and Disclosure Act of 1959. The Wagner Act, also known as the National Labor Relations Act of 1935, is often regarded as the most important piece of labor relations legislation. The act was passed for three main reasons. First, to protect the rights of employees and employers. Second, to encourage these parties to engage in collective bargaining. And third, to control their activities so the economy wouldn't be adversely affected. The Wagner Act established the National Labor Relations Board, or NLRB, to oversee compliance with the act. Let's take a look at some of the specific provisions of the act relative to employee rights, concerted activities, unfair labor practices, and the NLRB. The NLRA protects employees from employer and union misconduct, such as attempts by employers to prevent unions from organizing and attempts by unions to coerce employees into joining them. The NLRA also ensures that employees have the right to organize a union where none currently exists. The specific rights provided under Section 7 of the NLRA to employees include the following. The right to attempt to form a union in their workplace. The right to join a union even if it's not recognized. The right to assist in union organizing efforts. The right to engage in group activities called collective activity and the right to refuse to do any or all of the above. The NLRA also provides rights to employees who are not part of a union. These employees have the right to engage in concerted activity. Concerted activity exists when two or more employees act together to try to improve working conditions, or when a single employee approaches management after conferring with other employees on behalf or is acting on behalf of other employees. For example, if two or more employees talk with their employer about improving pay, or if an employee does so on behalf of one or more of her coworkers, these employees have engaged in protected concerted activity. Unfair labor practices, known as ULPs, are violations of the NLRA that deny rights and benefits to employees and can be the result of employer or union activity. Such violations include threatening to take jobs or benefits from employees who attempt to form a union, reassigning workers to less attractive jobs than their current ones if they're involved in union activities, and telling employees they will receive greater benefits if they don't join a union. Labor unions violate the NLRA when they tell employees they will lose their jobs if they don't join the union or when union employees are on strike, they bar non-strikers from entering an employer's premises. Specifically, Section 8 of the Act defines the following unfair labor practices. Interfering with employees' rights. Interfering with the formation of a labor organization. Discriminating against employees involved discharging because of action under the Act, and refusing to bargain collectively. The National Labor Relations Board, or NLRB, is an agency of the United States government that was created by Congress to administer the NLRA. The agency has two main functions. First, to prevent and remedy unfair labor practices, and second, to decide whether groups of employees want labor union representation. For the 12 years after its passage, the NLRA was perceived by many as giving too much power to unions. In response, Congress passed the Labor Management Relations Act of 1947, commonly known as the Taft-Hartley Act. The main purpose of the act is to protect the rights of employees and make the NLRB a more impartial referee for industrial relations rather than having it serve as an advocate for organized labor. 
Among the most significant outcomes of the Taft-Hartley Act was the provision that employees cannot be forced to join a union. 24 states have passed right-to-work laws to prevent workers from having to join a union as a condition of employment, be forced to not join a union as an employment condition, or be forced to pay union dues to a labor organization or be fined for not paying such dues. Just as the NLRA gave employees the freedom to join labor unions, the Taft-Hartley Act protects employers from certain labor union practices. The last part of the National Labor Relations Code, the Landrum-Griffith Act of 1959, protects union members from being abused by unions. It outlines the responsibilities of union officers, as well as the rights of union members via a Bill of Rights that gives union members the right to free speech and due process, the opportunity to be involved in the nomination process for the election of union leaders, and the right to receive copies of their collective bargaining agreements, as well as the right to sue their unions. Now that we understand the legislative platform or foundation for labor relations, let's talk about the lingo. To be effective in labor relations, there are a few terms you should be familiar with. It's important to know the following labor relations terms, including collective bargaining, negotiation, grievance, mediation, and arbitration. Let's take a look. Collective bargaining is bilateral negotiations between labor and management teams over wages, terms, and conditions of employment. The result of collective bargaining is a document specifying each side's respective rights and obligations known as a collective bargaining agreement. Important to collective bargaining and collective bargaining agreements are mandatory bargaining subjects which are directly related to NLRA stipulations or requirements. A refusal to bargain regarding these mandatory subjects is a violation of the NLRA. Mandatory bargaining subjects include wages, hours, merit increases, bonuses, pensions, profit sharing, health and welfare plans, discharges, grievance procedures, disciplinary procedures, drug testing, seniority, promotions, transfers, health and safety, work assignments, and plant closings, among others. Negotiation is a discussion intended to produce an agreement. In negotiating a collective bargaining agreement, the employer and union seek agreement on the terms and conditions of employment. Negotiations often take the form of positional bargaining. In positional bargaining, each part opens with their position on an issue. The parties then bargain from their separate operating positions to agree on one position. Haggling over a price is a typical example of positional bargaining. However, positional bargaining does not tend to produce good agreements. It is an inefficient means of reaching agreement, and agreements tend to neglect parties' interests. It encourages stubbornness and also tends to harm parties' relationships. Principled negotiation provides a better way of reaching good agreements. There are four elements of principled negotiation. First, separate the people from the problem. Second, focus on interests rather than positions. Third, generate a variety of options before settling on an agreement. And fourth, insist that the agreement be based on objective criteria. A grievance occurs during contract administration and refers to a dispute over the interpretation or application of a provision of the collective bargaining agreement. Simply, a grievance is a dispute or a disagreement as to the interpretation or application of a specific term or condition of employment as specified by the labor agreement. Mediation is a method of resolving disputes, known as alternative dispute resolution, in labor negotiations by employing a neutral third party, a mediator, to assist the parties in reaching agreement and by maintaining communication and encouraging them to move towards common ground. Arbitration is a method of resolving labor disputes, another form of alternative dispute resolution, that employs a neutral third party, in this case an arbitrator, to review the facts and make a decision that is binding on both parties. There are two types of arbitration. In interest arbitration, the arbitrator intervenes in the process to resolve an impasse in negotiation over issues such as wages or benefits. 
in grievance arbitration occurs during the life of the contract and results from an employee filing a grievance alleging that his or her rights, as specified under the collective bargaining agreement, have been violated.